Okay, welcome to PTZ Optics Live. My name is Paul Richards and I'm very excited because today's live stream is all about PTZ camera control inside of vMix. I'm here with my co-host Tess. Tess, how you doing? Hi, I'm doing very well. Thanks for asking. This is going to be a fun show. We're actually going to go live on Amazon. Tess, we're getting the same image uh, thing as last time. We need to do 2.8 megabits per second for Amazon Live, okay? I think I forgot. Yes, we're going to add a new bit rate for that. Very excited today right, because we are going to be... Tess is managing all of our streams remotely. So happy Wednesday, everybody. Very excited to be part of this today. And we're going to be talking about camera control inside of vMix. I recently published a brand new book called The Unofficial Guide to vMix that uh, where you can get for free. So this is a really cool new book. Um, it is totally for free on StreamGeek's website, The Unofficial Guide to vMix. Um, so we can get you... Tess, maybe we can pop the link to the, to the book into the chat so people can get that. Um, sure. It's in the description as well. And I'll make sure to put it in the chat. And so you guys can get a copy of this book. vMix is a great live streaming software, and we can use this software to control PTZ cameras. So we're going to show this off today. I just want to say hi to everybody. Hey, Jim, how's it going? Apart TV, thanks for being here. Hey, Scott, let's jump into our tutorial today. So if you use vMix, let us know in the chat um, because this, is gonna be, this video is going to be for you today. So here we have vMix, and we're going to pop right into it here and jump into some PTZ camera control stuff. So if you're unfamiliar with vMix, essentially vMix has inputs down here at the bottom. And I've even got an input from Mike there. He's on camera finally. Um, so basically we can have these PTZ cameras here controlling it. And so essentially you can add inputs down below here. So um, Kyle Gunderman, I know he uses uh, vMix. Uh, I know a lot of, lot of others do as well. Um, so when we hit add input, we can add a camera. We can add an NDI camera, or we can add a SDI camera. There's a lot of different cameras uh, types that we can add. Um, but I already have a camera in here today. This is actually a, what camera is this, Mike? This is a 12X SDI in front of me. PTZ Optics 12X SDI camera. You can name your inputs there, which is really nice. So in the PTZ tab, and I should mention that this only works for the 4K and Pro versions of vMix. If you have the free version or the basic HD version, it doesn't unlock PTZ control until you get to up to the 4K version of, of vMix. And it looks like Jim uses vMix for special events and recording Pro presenter lyrics over our pre-recorded worship songs. Really sweet. Glad to hear it. Let me know if anyone else out there is using vMix for anything. And so in this little um, thing here, we're controlling a PTZ camera. And Mike, I don't know if we have like a side-by-side -side shot where we can show um, the camera actually being controlled by vMix. But there's the PTZ optics camera. So this is a 12X SDI camera. And it makes it really easy to live stream. Yes, definitely. Now we are live on Amazon. So let me just let ca catch everybody up who's on Amazon. We are, we have been live streaming on Amazon and this is a cool test. Maybe we'll pop the link into the chat for people to check that out. It's really fun to live stream on Amazon. In fact, it, it's just an interesting, if you're a live streamer or somebody who does video production, check out live streaming on Amazon. Uh, this book, The Unofficial Guide to vMix, if you want the paperback, is available on Amazon. So we thought it kind of made sense to stream on Amazon. And uh, it's got all the, the links to the products that we're talking about today. So that's pretty cool. So talking about PTZ cameras and control inside of the page. Tess, are you there? Sure am. Can you s actually share the PDF file to this book? Um, it's on HubSpot. The direct file. Yeah, okay. because we just redid the website today and some of the, the pages are broken. Okay, so let's get to the, uh, the demo here. So the first thing we're going to do is grab control of the PTZ Optics camera. 
So inside of vMix, we open up the camera that we'd like to control. And Mike, you wanted me to show these presets again. This is Mike's little Digimon here. There we go. And you can see the camera just moving to these PTZ camera positions. So if you're a church, maybe you have uh, a preset for the pastor. Maybe you have a preset for the worship band. Maybe another preset for you know the choir. And you can zoom into all of those spots throughout. Now, as we open an input, and if we have the 4K version or higher, we can connect to the camera and just grab PTZ control, which is really nice. Now there's a couple different levers here for affecting the control that we have inside of vMix. One is the pan tilt speed, right? So that's the, the pan tilt speed there. So you can see it's nice and slow. So we want it to be slow if you want you know, to have slow stroll. The other is the position speed. So that's the speed at which the camera moves in between these positions. So now we've got a nice slow transition in between these camera presets. So it really just depends on your production and how you want to do it. But essentially, vMix allows you to control the physical pan tilt speed. So we can go real fast. We need to catch something. Or we can go really slow. Or in between, right? Now there's also a lever for zoom speed. So if we want to zoom out nice and slow, we can turn it all the way down and reveal our studio. Um, or we can zoom in real fast. That's not as we can zoom in all the way like that. It's pretty fast. Um, focus tends to do a little better on slower zoom. Now, uh, these PTZ uh, little boxes down here, remember and recall specific areas that you can you can go back to. So this is great if you're live streaming and you've got three or four different spaces that you can follow. This is great uh, for presets, but what if they need the camera to follow a person? Now, if you need to follow a person, uh, let's talk about that. Hi, Vivek from, from Brooklyn. It's nice to have you on Amazon. I'm keeping up my eyes on Amazon as well. Um, but right here, using the iPhone app, I find is really easy to do. So let's take a look at this app, which is available on Amazon actually, but it's also available on the App Store. So let me show you guys a couple things. One is there's this app here, and this app is for your iPhone or your Android phone, and this app will allow you to control the camera. Um, I want to show this app because I think it's a little easier to use than vMix for manual controls. For the presets, as you can see, it's quite nice. Now let me show you guys this here for a second. I'm gonna lift this camera up. This camera here has a custom label on it. And what we always do is we custom label, print this out, the IP address. Because when you've got a couple different cameras, you wanna have the IP address available so that you can show that, so you can kind of recall it. Because you need to have the IP address. And I'll show you really quickly why. If we go into this, and I have a, I'm gonna add this camera. We'll call this, um, we'll just call it the 12X. And I'm gonna put the IP address in. The IP address is 192.168.1.67. Click done, close, and now I can control this camera with my smartphone. So the cool thing with this, you can see kind of from, from below there, you can see that I'm controlling this camera. Um, this is much easier to follow someone ma with manual control like this than actually controlling the camera or actually using vMix to control. And it's also nice because with vMix, you know, you probably, if you're using vMix, you're probably using it for a lot of different reasons. You know, you're, you're switching cameras, you're doing titles, you're doing overlays. You know, Jim was talking about using Pro Presenter. So this is nice to have someone else operate the camera to follow. So does that make sense? Is that hopefully answering your question? Elmbridge, who's talking about um, needs a person for that. As presets are great, um, but needs a person for that. Now, 
Uh, Bellevue, uh, Seventh-day Advent Church is saying, I had major reliability issues with the iOS app. For example, selecting the presets cause uncontrolled Zoom and uh, Zoom to Max Zoom. Um, for that, uh, I really suggest that you upgrade your camera firmware. Uh, that is definitely the issue. Um, some of the new app features uh, require new firmware. And so that's, that's most likely what's going on here. And Todd probably has the latest firmware. Todd's saying the app works great. He uses it all the time on the iPad. So make sure that you update your firmware uh, so that you definitely have a good experience. Now, uh, Gordon is saying he doesn't want to hire a cameraman when he records live sporting events. He purchased the camera for that purpose and he needs to, to move the camera as, and that's as much as I, that's as much as I can read on this. Maybe Tess can read it to me. Um, Moves the camera. What did she say? Hold on. I'm trying to find it. It's on YouTube. I don't see it. Who's the commenter? Is it Gordon? <laughs> yeah, Gordon Fry. Excuse me. So we'll get to that question. Oh, moves the camera as shown. That's it. Moves the camera as shown. I purchased the camera for that purpose and I do not need to move the camera as shown. Okay, great. Well, you don't need to move the camera as much. So that's fine. Now, I want to mention, by the way, everybody, that if you use vMix, and I've been using it for six years, I highly suggest getting the free unofficial guide to vMix. And this will be free on Kindle as well. Uh, and the name of the app on the Google Play Store is Pan Tilt Zoom. Pretty straightforward. Um, and it's it's $10 there. And you can also get it on the Amazon store for Kindle devices. Um, but this is totally free. The unofficial guide to vMix test is going to post the PDF link for this. And uh, Outcast is confirming you'll want a few cameras for sports. And I know Outcast with the Palmetto Tigers uses the PTZ Optics 30X NDI camera, I believe. He needs to move the camera. Yeah, so it's nice to be able to move the camera. Um, let's take a look back at vMix. I want to take a couple look at a couple other options for PTZ controls inside of vMix. Now, as we mentioned in the PTZ section, we have the ability to pan, tilt, and zoom, but we haven't looked at creating uh, presets yet. So let's let's take our manual speed up a little bit, and I'm going to zoom in on this giveaway wheel over here. Now, by the way, we do have a giveaway today. So if you're interested in winning a PTZ Optics camera. You can go to ptzoptics.com slash giveaway and enter to win. Now, when we zoom into this uh, device here, we can hit update position. And what that does is it creates an input inside of vMix. So we have our little input for our Digimon. And I kind of like it to move faster, honestly. So I'm going to go over to this here. Where's our Digimon? Where are you, Mr. Digimon? There he is. I got to update this because I moved the camera and picked it up. That's why that didn't show up. I'm going to get rid of a couple of these since they're in the wrong places now. So I've got my Digimon and I'm going to just update the speed, the position speed a little bit so it goes faster. And now I can go back to this position that we just made. So it's a really easy way to go back and forth between positions. So this is IP camera control. So if you look at the back of the PTZ Optics camera, just to give you guys an idea of how we're using this, we have an ethernet connection right here. And that's how we power the camera. That's how we control the camera with vMix. We have an HDMI connection, which is actually what I'm using to control, to get the video currently with a Magewell frame grabber. And we've got an SDI connection to connect with, you know, SDI video switchers and PCIe cards. And then finally, um, we have the um, NDI connection if you want if you're using one of the NDI cameras with Ethernet. Now, Bellevue Advent saying he does have the latest firmware, so he thinks maybe he needs to update the app, and that is true. There's both the app and the software should be updated for this. Now, you can see right there. Boop that I got my, my vMix control. Let's show that from the desktop view. Um, and we've controlling it over IP. Now there's also a couple other ways to control PTZ cameras with vMix. In fact, I'd like to show the virtual control as well. 
So for example, this uh, is just an image. This is a really cool picture that Mike took. And I've connected, these are all the different options for PTZ controls. So you can do a virtual PTZ control. You can do PTZ optics camera control. You can do UVC control, which is the ability to control a USB camera, like the Huddle Cam HD camera. And then you can do the PTZ Optics Z Cam, which is something that I also want to show today. But let's try the virtual PTZ camera. Now, the cool thing about a virtual PTZ camera is it's basically a camera that just virtually zooms into an image. So for example, let's just use this really quickly. Let's create one input on this side, one input on this side, and then let's move to them. So take a look at that. Pretty cool. So how would we actually use that? Well, let's turn the position speed down and let's cut from one to the next here. And now you're doing virtual PTZ control. So that's good for like 4K cameras. It's, let's do it nice and slow. And it can also be used for like videos and pictures as well. Um, so if we go to this one, we should be able to merge to it. Let's see, actually, I guess if the speed's all the way at zero, it doesn't move. Let's go up just a hair. There we go. So we have the ability to kind of move back and forth digitally. So this camera is a pan tilt zoom camera with optical zoom. When you zoom it in, it optically zooms in, but vMix also supports digital pan tilt zoom as well. Let's take a look. So, so Elbridge is saying, Paul, can you store the color info within the vMix preset along with the f-stop exposure? Well, no, you cannot, but let's still take a look at it in vMix because it is pretty cool. So basically inside of the vMix interface here, we have the ability to pan, pan, tilt, and zoom the camera, right? We can zoom in and out, pan, tilt, and zoom. But the other thing that we can do is we can do full color correction. Now these are the color wheels that you've probably seen in professional color grading tools. Um, you can see you got all kinds of different options for color grading. I'm going to reset these, but let's just spend a moment looking at the color correction tools here because they are so powerful. The first wheel, which is called lift, this represents the shadows. So we can kind of increase the shadows or decrease the shadows and then change all the colors in just the shadows of the image. I'll reset that there. The second wheel is called gamma, and this is the midtones. So this is where we can do the kind of the skin tone of an image. And then finally, the third wheel represents the highlights, which is the overall brightness of the image. Now, this is kind of technical. If you click color bars, it simplifies it a little bit because now you can isolate red, green, and blue. And for me, I'm colorblind, but it really helps me to kind of figure out where in the image is, you know, the highlights versus the, you know, the overall brightness versus the gamma. So one thing you can do in vMix is you have access to waveform monitors. And I can look at a waveform monitor right next to a uh, the preview. So if we look at this waveform monitor here, we can see that uh, basically as we're adjusting the red, that red is low on the kind of lift side here. But if we adjust this red, this is the red in the gain, right? This is the red in the brightness of the image. So you can really look at it in a nice scope. Now, why am I going through all of this to answer your question? The first wheel is used for the dark areas, the middle wheel is for the skin tones, and the final wheel is for the brightness, right? So we can do this fine tuning of the color correction, and we can save all of this information. So I'm so bad at color correcting, so I'm just going to add a little blue and get rid of a little red. I mean, trust me, I'm, I'm not good at this. I'm just going to do that for the heck of it. And then we can save this entire preset and call it something. So let's call it you know, basically like image two. Now what we can do is we can go ahead and apply this. There's good color. And then we can apply those presets 
to different cameras. We can also turn it off and on as well. So really good stuff here for your ability to color correct cameras. Now Ryan's saying, I have two cameras and several PTZ preset inputs in vMix. I can prevent human error PTZ move. Can I prevent human error PTZ movement of the program camera? What is he saying? Can I prevent human error of PTZ movement of the program camera? So usually in video production, there's an output and a preview. So there's the preview and the output. Maybe it's preview and program. So program, he's talking about the, the camera that's in the right screen. So let's go back to our vMix mic and show this a little closer. So this side over here is in the preview side. And over here, our Digimon, he is in the output side. So can we just zoom out so I can show the whole the whole interface? So essentially, um, what we're what we're seeing here is we want to cut from. It's really nice to have two cameras because what you want to do is you don't normally want to show the movement in between the PTZ camera presets, right? You just want the camera to be able to, let's, let's get three presets here. So we'll turn this color correction off. We'll zoom in over to one more device over here. Zoom into that little mount over there. So what we would do is if this is already our output and this is, this is the image that's going live, we would cut to another image on in preview let the camera switch and then cut back once the camera's moved and focused. So we cut back and that's exactly how vMix is designed. It's designed when you click a preset, it moves in preview. So it moves when you take it to preview. That's important because now we have the ability to move it to preview before we have it to program. So I believe there is no way to prevent, prevent accidental movement of the program camera. It just happens, LOL, saying Daniel. Yes, there's really not much you can do as far as uh, accidental movements. Now, let me show you guys another feature inside of vMix that maybe you guys may not know, which is called the playlist. Now, the playlist can automate PTZ camera controls um, in a loop, which is pretty cool. So let's just add a bunch of these. And what we can do is we can go inside of each of these PTZ camera presets and play them in a loop and switch the duration in which they stay up for. So let's say 12 seconds each. Well, we'll do five seconds for these. And so essentially when I hit loop and start, vMix, if we zoom out a little bit, Mike, is going to go through this playlist and every, you can see the little green arrow there. It's gonna go down after 12 seconds, and then it's gonna do five seconds each, and it will actually just loop through PTZ presets. Now, this is good for if you're at a church and you're waiting for church to start, you can have the cameras move around throughout the church for like 30 minutes. And so instead of having a static image, the cameras can just automatically be panning and tilting around, showing different cool things that are happening on, you know, inside a, any given space, whether it's a church or a different area. So I'm going to stop that there, but that's kind of an interesting preset area that I think a lot of people, um, you know, are just learning about how that works. Okay. So with that being said, um, a couple of the other interesting things going on is um, the PTZ cameras themselves have the ability to have a static IP address. So in the setup videos, you can see here, and we'll go ahead and operate this one. Um, you can see that the camera can have uh, basically be controlled completely over IP. So you do want to set a static IP address for the camera. And then once the static IP address is set, you can control it over Wi-Fi. You can control it with vMix on your same local area network. And it really, you can control it with an IP joystick and it really helps. In fact, Otis is saying that he used the playlist 
for a walkthrough funeral service. That's perfect. In fact, the very first time I saw the vMix playlist being used um, was actually um, at a party uh, at Scott Whitney's Podwork Studio in Las Vegas to, at, after the NAB show. And everybody was there. And all the PTC cameras just kept moving slowly all around the studio. I was like, how is he doing this? Is somebody controlling these cameras for hours and hours? No, he has the PTC presets from vMix loaded into a playlist and just slowly panning and tilting around the room. And it really looked beautiful. So it was very handy and a very interesting uh, use for this type of thing. Now, the next thing I'll show is um, I wanted to mention, again, the book, The Unofficial Guide to vMix, this is totally free for the PDF copy. We can get this uh, also on Amazon, and there's an entire vMix course that you can take as well, and all of those links are pretty easy to find if you Google The Unofficial Guide to vMix. So very excited about all of this. Um, other than that, um, what else do we need to show off, Mike? Oh, the Zcam cameras. So the PTZ Optics Z Cam cameras are a little different than the PTZ cameras. And Mike, why don't I go ahead and show it, my NDI camera? I think that's an input that we have as an option, possibly. Um, and I'll turn this into a wireless camera to show you guys a little bit behind the scenes of what we're up to. All right, there we go. Ooh. Does it take a second to click in? This is the NDI app. It's not really showing that great, is it? Well, you can see the Z cam right there. Let's, let's show them a better image of that, Mike. That's not working so good. We got a couple better images of this. So this is, can you automate? Okay, let's answer this question from Loud Music Pigeon. Can you also automate the PTZ camera outside of vMix playlists? It's <sighs> a good question. It's coming in from Twitch, so one thing I'll say there is that uh, you can control the cameras in Twitch, which is pretty cool. But automating the cameras outside of vMix playlists is something that we should look at doing. Uh, because I am having some interesting features included into the PTZ Optics camera app. And it's kind of a bummer that you can only do that with vMix. So I will look at adding that as a feature into the PTZ Optics camera control app. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write that down as a, a feature request because that's a free Mac and PC camera control app that's got some OBS controls and vMix controls coming to it soon that I'm very excited about. Um, all right. Outcast is bouncing between the Google event and the PTZ Optics event. Thank you for being here, Chad. All right. So looking at the PTZ Optics Z Cam cameras. Oh, we've got another question here. I think Ryan means the PTZ movement should be blocked when the camera is in program. Maybe a feature request in the vMix forum. Yeah, I mean, I think it's really the way it's designed is to 100% make sure that when you go to PTZ camera movements that um, it's supposed to be used in preview. But I could see like a little dialog box that popped up that said, hey, this camera is in, is in program right now, right? It's in the output. Do, are you sure you want to move this camera? You know, change the the input that you're using for your program, and before you move this camera to preview, I'm with you. I like that. That's a great idea. Good idea. Uh, good idea. Um, and sorry about the link being broken for this book. You can get it for free. Tess is going to post the PDF, right? Tess, aren't you going to post the PDF link for this? I did. I posted it earlier and I can post it again. Um, and we do have a few questions on Facebook, so I want to make sure that oh, you yeah, them let's, let's answer them. Sure. Um, okay. Let's see. I'll scroll back up so we can get to some of the earlier ones here. Will says, have you found a way to mute sound out on a live stream, but keep it on a recording? Want to avoid a possible copyright issue? Oh, um, so copyright is usually, issues are usually always have to do with audio and music. So I've seen that a lot. And um, I'm not really covering audio and audio copyright in this video today. But 
generally just just be careful with the music that you're playing and, you're, and make sure it's not copyright uh, infringement on anyone because that that's usually the issue that you run into. Um, I've seen if you use shortcuts that run a script, you can block the movement. There are a few ways to have blank stingers, for example, and things of that nature. Um, so yes, you can do that. We've moved our PTZ Optics 30X in program. It works great for slow zooms and pans. It really does. It, 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 you can move the PTZ cameras in program. You just have to be careful to you know, reduce the speeds. And you can even lock the focus. If you're worried about it going out of focus, you can lock the focus. Interesting uh, fact about Amazon. I found out that you cannot post links in there. Jason. Mom. Ah. All right, so Tess just posted the link to the book so you guys can get the free copy. And if you want a paperback copy that's available on Amazon. Now let's take a look at the Z cams. So we've got this really beautiful Z cam on a slider here. These Z cam cameras have an ethernet connection. So we've got ethernet connected, we've got SDI connected, and it's capturing this beautiful shots of you know, objects on our table which is really nice. And so these Z cams can be controlled in vMix differently. So if we look at our vMix interface that we're setting up right here, this is over, let's show them over the shoulder, Mike. If, if Do we have the ability to show them over the shoulder? Okay, cool. So this is uh, our vMix interface here. And you know this is what everyone's been talking about. This is the preview and this is the program. You can see that we're streaming. And um, essentially, Inside of vMix, these are all of our cameras. So we've got a camera on the Z cam. <laughs> we've got a Zeely camera. We've got a top camera. And where's our, oh, there it is. Okay, that, this is our Z cam camera here. So to get into this Z cam to control it, we would hit, we could double click it or you can hit the cog. Um, so there's two, a couple different easy ways. And you can see here that Mike is connected to it over the IP address of the camera. So he's typed in the IP address of the camera. And by the way, you see how the, the comments keep coming in automatically? Go to vMix Social real quick and just turn off the automatically update title. And then mine is, I know that's been like, it wasn't me, it was just happening. But let's see, what is that? Uh, it says, I'm using Panel Builder. And when a PTZ camera is in the program, a PTZ controls, he has a red warning border. Wow. Oh. Jan, you have to share that with me. Please email me. Can somebody, can you write that down, Test Panel Builder? We need to look into that. I don't know what that is, but we need to check that out. Okay. So let's go to um, the desktop capture. Okay. Or that's fine. Yeah, show the desktop capture. Because so th let's show that. So this is, this is what we're looking at here. This is a 12X PTZ Optics Z Cam. These are really affordable PTZ cameras. We have it on a slider. And so it creates these beautiful kind of left to right product shots. You can see it full screen there. So we really enjoy these shots. And there's no need for a PTZ camera to be on a slider. It really makes sense to put a Z cam on there. And so we get these beautiful shots. And But sometimes, Mike, you still like to zoom it in and out, right? You still like to get control of it inside of vMix. So let's show our desktop capture. There she is. And so this is our vMix setup. And I don't like to show this very often because it's so complicated and it looks crazy. But let's, let's make it a little easier by looking at cameras. And let's open up the Zcam input. There it is. And so in here, you can see that we've connected to the Zcam. So let's disconnect real quick and show the dropdown. So there's all these options, and one of the options is PTZ Optics Zcam. So we hit that, and we hit connect, knowing that we have the right IP address, and now we can zoom in and out in vMix. Now, you'll notice that it totally blurred out when you zoomed out, and that's because I have the focus locked in specifically on a plane of interest. So that's just something that we like to do. We like to lock the focus of our Z cams when they're on a slider because we specifically want it to be, you know, focused on a specific location. Um, but anyway, um, that's the ability to control the PTZ Optics Z cams with vMix. So 
that's pretty much what we wanted to show today. We showed PTZ camera control with PTZ optics cameras in vMix. We talked a little bit about the brand new book. It'll be available for free um, starting on Friday at the Kindle store. Of course, you can get the PTZ control or you get the, the whole PDF version of this uh, for free as well. Tess posted the link in the YouTube chat and uh, we showed the Z cams uh, being controlled as well. So that's our show. Now we have a giveaway. I can't forget the giveaway. So let's go to our giveaway uh, wheel and we're going to do a giveaway today. Somebody could win a PTZ Optics camera. Essentially the way it works is that we post, uh, we pull, uh, we're gonna pull three, we'll pull a winner. Hopefully someone is here today. And you gotta be here watching in the live chat in order to claim the view. Now Living Waters is saying, zoom can be done by adjusting the position in vMix, but it does lose some quality. Yes, you can, That's di that would be digital zoom. And to be honest, something I wanted to talk about regarding digital zoom is digital zoom is not that bad, especially if you're only streaming in like 720 and you've got a 1080p camera. But I want to mention that uh, you can also use digital zoom to reduce some of the camera shake issues that you might be having as well. So is Joe Womble here? Tess, I'm going to I'm going to chat you these links because I don't know uh I don't have all the, the streams open. Joe Womble, if you're here, let us know you can win the giveaway wheel. Nick is asking how are we sharing our vMix screen? So generally we will share our screen over NDI, but our network has had some issues with screen sharing over NDI. So today we are just using a HDMI capture card. So HDMI out of my laptop into our computer. That's it, our streaming computer. It makes it easier for us. Um, so Joe Womble, I'm gonna keep pulling winners because I always like to get a winner quickly. You guys have been watching the show, waiting for us to, to get a winner here. So I'm gonna keep pulling them. Joe, if you are here, just let us know in the chat. Otherwise we have JL Carols. Carl's, JL Carl's. I'm just going to keep pulling winners here. We're going to get somebody and then we're going to spin this wheel and someone's going to possibly win a PTZ Optics camera. All right, we got Gerbert from the Netherlands. Is Gerbert here? And then let me see, who else are we looking for here? It's going to keep pulling winners here. Boop, 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 boop. JL Carl's. Just let us know if you're here, guys. If you're watching and you're trying to win the, the camera, just chat to us here. Jason Jennings are from North Carolina. Jason Jennings. Let's see, Daniel Wright wants to know about this page builder software too. What is this page builder software you talk of? Chris Rosh from Ann Arbor, Michigan. Boom, bada boom, 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 boom. Keep going. All right, we're going to pull a couple more. If we don't get any more, we'll roll it over to next week. I'm going to miss that camera shot, Mike. What are we going to do? Get a drone shot. We'll fly it outside. Scott Becker from Wooster, Ohio. Go a little bit more. Do a couple more of these. If no, if no, if we don't get a oh, Otis, Otis is here. Do we, do we see Otis? No, I didn't pull Otis's name. All right. No, I don't think so. All right, I'm gonna keep pulling for a couple more. Chris Brooks from Illinois. Chris Brooks. Gonna keep going. A couple more. I know you guys want to. You want to get a winner here. Jim Teague is in the house. Hey, Jim. Elaine from Canada. Scott Becker is here. Scott Becker's here. All right. We got Scott. All right, Scott, we're going to put spin the wheel for you. Here we go. Do, 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 do. Always fun to spin the wheel. Do, do. Do, 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 do. 
<laughs> Here we go. Hold on. Oh, my. Spin again. Oh, keep talking. He was good. He spent. He did really well. Oh, oh my God! My... Oh. oh my gosh! You won a stress grip. <laughs> Congratulations! You won a stress grip. We use these all the time at our studio, so I'll send you one. All right. Email me, and we will go from there. I did you put that on the wheel? Uh, the Digimon must be on. Digimon was on there. All right. That's our show, everybody. Scott, congratulations. You want a stress grip. We'll see you on our next show. Bye, everybody. Thanks.